Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Zam. Thank you for your patience. All right. So today is our very first uh, session of a series of e-classes meant for PSLE students who are sitting for the exams this year, right? Uh, 28, uh, 2018. So today, the first e-class is a preview e-class so everybody can attend this e-class for free, right? Because I want you to have a feel of how it's going to be like. Is the technology suitable for you? And things like that. So that's it for this first class. First E-class and the second E-class which is happening on Friday. Uh, it will be available through live streaming as well. On our YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page. So make sure you tune in in the next preview class as well. Which is coming to you on Friday as well. Alright. So I'm Dr. Zam. Um... And you are actually part of our PSLE math revision program, okay, which takes you from today all the way till your PSLE, which will happen on 28th September 2018. So there will be about 20 sessions. All right, you will go through with me on all the things that you need to know, the must know concepts, the problem sum strategies, all the way till your PSLE. All right, so for this session, which is the E class session one, I will be looking at Dr. Zam math problem sums toolbox. All right, so in this toolbox, uh, for part one, there will be three concepts that I'm going to show you, which is the remainder concept, repeated identity concept, and equal concept. All right? If you want to sign up for the whole package, you can go to the link drzam.com slash revision series 2018. All right? So we have three different kinds of revision series. We have PSLE math, uh, we have O level, N level, E math and O level, N level, A math. So you can go to the Revision Series 2018 website. You can take a look at the schedule, what topics are there. So if you get a package for PSLE math, it's only $67 per student and I will guide your child through or guide you through till your PSLE. All right, there are going to be about 20 sessions if you buy a package. But if you buy individually, it will be $10 per class. Uh, and I want to make it affordable so that as many students as possible can tune in. Alright, so if you see behind me, there's actually this uh, heart-shaped pillow, alright, or heart-shaped cushion, one heart charity. So most of the proceeds for all these classes will go to that uh, CSR program of our company. Alright, uh, I believe that knowledge should be made accessible to everyone, right? So that's the reason why I put myself into this project. So I hope you all will support me. On top of that, just do take note when you join our math revision series, either for A math, E math, or PSLE math, there is an ironclad money back guarantee. What I what I mean by here is when you buy the package, I will guarantee that your child will improve. If your child does not improve, you just show me the results. All right, their results slip for PSLE N level or O level. If there's no result, you will get back the money hundred percent. You can keep everything. Right, no question asked. Just let me see as a proof. Right, but I know a lot of parents, sometimes money is not a problem. The problem here is you want to be sure that your, your, your children have the right guidance all the way. So if you want to know more about me, just go to drzam.com. Okay, give yourself the confidence that probably I should be the one that is guiding your child. But let me tell you this, it takes a village right, to make sure your children succeed. So my advice to you here is don't just stop the bug at me. Don't just uh, rely on me. Your children should be relying on all teachers, on all resources, on the parents, right? So together, we will form a village to help every child do well in math. Okay? So for today's uh, e-class, is a preview e-class. So it's uh, free, available free on YouTube, on Facebook, on a webinar. So the reason why I do it free is because I want to let you know how the whole thing will work. Alright? All your child needs is a device that is connected to the internet. And your child just need a web browser, all right. So if your children is using Facebook, you can catch us live on Facebook, uh, catch us live on YouTube. But for e classes, which are not for preview, they are not available anywhere else except on the webinar. So the recorded versions are also available. So let's say your children cannot make it today at five pm because he has supplementary classes in school or he has tuition classes, he can revisit the videos later on when he's available. Alright, and I'm always available to your children online. Your children can uh, message me uh, through Facebook, through YouTube, or you know, or email, right? Contact at drsam.com. Alright, since everybody is uh, now here, 
uh, I hope everybody can grab a seat Okay, make yourself comfortable Take a piece of paper Right, so the best way to learn is not just to watch or to hear me The best way to learn is to actually take a piece of paper Actively learn Alright, so the parents out there who are with your children Around 5 o'clock, you know, probably you all are Still at work, you know, trying to find your way home So for those who are on your own Right, for those children there who are your own Those students there Take a piece of paper You know, get ready to be very involved Okay, because today I'm going to cover with you Three very important concepts Which are considered non-routine questions Later I'll talk more about all this In today's E-class I want you to truly understand Truly understand how to use these concepts Alright, together with my method Of teaching you to do well in math Use these three important concepts in the best way possible And then next time when you uh, see different questions And then you uh, know how to use these methods Alright, you can use them When you detect or you can identify that certain questions involve using these methods Alright, without further ado If you have questions, you can always post them Because today is uh, the e-class preview You can post them in the webinar Hello to those who are on the webinar I can see uh, there are actually a bunch of you on the webinar uh, congratulations uh, for being in the webinar The webinar is for VIP only Such as yourself I can also see people on YouTube live Okay, welcome I can also see those who are on Facebook live Also welcome to all of you Because today is a special first A class preview So all of you all are invited Everybody in public is invited And the first class and the second classes For PSLE Math Revision Program Will be made available to the public So that you all can review the materials Alright, so let's get started so for today, like I mentioned, uh, we're going to take a look at the three important concepts, alright? So we're going to take a look at the non-routine methods. These are known as non-routine methods, alright? And all these non-routine methods are actually part of Dr. Zhang's math problem sums toolbox, alright? So we're going to take a look at what is remainder concept, right? So remainder concept is one of the important concepts that you need to know, right? Because PSLE questions will involve remainder concept. Alright, and then we're going to take a look at repeated identity concept Right, and the third one for today, we're going to take a look at equal concept So we're going to spend about one hour, right, on these three concepts The whole point is, I do not want to rush you uh, on all these different methods And the reason why I chose to start with non-routine method is because I feel that with these non-routine methods being started first Right, at the beginning of the class it will allow the most number of students to improve their math grades faster and more quickly because prelims is just around the corner, right, in August. So I want you to equip yourself with all these problem sum strategies so that you can use immediately to improve your grades. That is the reason why, if you notice, I do not want to revise your concepts. I do not want to revise your heuristics, all right? I want to go straight right into the problem sum strategies that matter for you. So these are the three concepts that we're going to touch on all right so like i mentioned to you all these methods that we're going to cover for the next seven sessions all right for the next seven sessions i'm not going to revise your math concepts i'm just going to focus on problem sums all right for the psa re math revision because i believe if you know how to do all the problem sums in the next seven classes which is about three weeks just before your prelims you'll be able to improve tremendously because trust me the math concepts that are tested are very simple in problem sums, right? They will never test you millions in millions or billions, right? The numbers are not huge. The numbers are reasonable. But what they're testing on, on for your PSLE math and in prelims is how you solve problems, right? And how you reason mathematically. So for non-routine methods, I've decided to start on them first so that you can do your best for these questions. For those who are scoring A, you want to get an A star. So use non-routine. For those who are not scoring B or you're just scoring C, right? By knowing how to do non-routine, it will help you to think better. So do take note. If you are here because you've never watched any video, please go to my website, drzam.com. Please watch what is Singapore Primary Math. Uh, and Dr. Zam's math so you can understand about Dr. Zam's case checklist and GWS method and I have also posted PSLE revision guide alright to help you revise your PSLE so there's actually another video on that so make sure you watch all these videos alright before you go to this okay now what are non-routine questions non-routine here means these are the kind of questions which are typically are very unlikely to students, right? So these are the kind of question where you cannot spot because 
they will ask you this kind of question and it will never appear to you it doesn't seem to to have repeated before in the past so it's they are very unfamiliar to you all and at the same time this kind of questions require high connective demand from you all right compared to those other easy questions so these questions are the difficult questions all right so sometimes even when you have the knowledge or the skills you might not be able to do it all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to give you some methods for non-routine questions all right so what basically it means here is you know problem solving the true form of problem solving is it's not just about you practicing particular methods or techniques you know but rather you must be ready you must be ready with all your problem sum toolbox right everything in the problem sum toolbox be ready to apply them wherever you need all right so i repeat again when you do problem sums or you carry out any questions or you're trying to answer any questions please use the doctor sums keys checklist when answering any question and follow the flow of gws method which is givens then create your workings and find out what's the final solution so for those who have not downloaded the keys checklist or the gws method please sign up for the newsletter all right so just go to drzum.com slash newsletter and you can download all of this very easily all right good now that we understand what's non-routine questions and non-routine methods let's move uh into the understanding of how do you do well so to do well for non-routine questions like i mentioned in dr zamki's checklist you must apply all concepts you must apply all skills that you know all processes that you know the heuristics and all the methods that we're going to cover in the problem sums toolbox all right so today is the first part and we're going to cover three concepts so the first concept of non remainder uh non-routine method is the remainder concept right so when do you use remainder concept? Now, here is the thing. Dr. Zam Map Problem Sum Toolbox, okay, we will give you many and many strategies to use problem sum strategies, but you must know when to use these strategies appropriately. You must select the appropriate problem sum strategies. All right, so remainder concept, when do you use it? All right, so remainder concept involves the use of models. Okay, every student here more or less know how to use models, but of course, sometimes I also notice students who are still weak at using models. Right, so remainder concept involves using models, using branches, and using units. I know some of you all there who might not even know what are branches. How can I need to use branches now? Right? So branches is another method you can use, but most of the time, to tell you the truth, I rather let students use a method that they are most comfortable. Because branches sometimes could be too uh, I would say too strange for a student because they're not used to it and your PSL is just around the corner so it's a bit too late to get used to using branches so I would expect you to just stick to models and units right but later on I'll teach you how you modify models such that it's easier for you because models do have restrictions okay they do have their constraints all right so the important feature of this concept is when the remainder all right, or part of a given is mentioned and you're required to carry out numerical calculations on it. So what it means is they will tell you, oh, probably mommy bought some uh, cakes or bought some uh, some marbles, okay, or you have some marbles and then uh, you use the marbles for something and then you have a remainder and a percentage of the remainder. So it's like a remainder of a remainder, right? So this kind of concept, it is very important for you to know that it is a part of a part of a part so you need to be very clear and understand the problem before you use the remainder concept so your understanding of fractions are very important all right so this kind of question they will ask you uh, they will mix around with fraction they will mix around with ratio they will mix around with percentage because all of them means a part of a whole right so your understanding of part of whole is very very important to do remainder concept and they like to test this sort of questions right so depending on uh, whether you can use a model because some some problems you cannot solve using models right because the givens have big numbers so sometimes you draw a model they are not practical the standard model that you draw is not practical so you have to use branches and then you have to look out for the final fraction of each branch to ensure uh, all parts add up to one whole right so for today i'm going to make things easy for you i'm going to use something that you already know so that you can apply remainder concept quite easily all right so we're going to take a look at this so you don't have to worry about something being so difficult you need like months before you can master the method all right so for today i'm just going to go through one question all right and i'm going to show you and make you understand remainder concept all right by using whatever uh, problem sum strategies that you know whatever heuristics that you know like for example models and units all right okay so now let's take a look at the question now before 
uh, before we even read the question, I just want you to point out to you, Dr. Zamsky's checklist and GWS method is very important for you to use so that you can become better and better at math. All right. So let me just go through with you. GWS method basically means GWS, right? G means givens. You look at the givens, you look at the solution, and then you figure out the working. So to figure out the workings, there are clues that you need to get from the givens. And sometimes some of the givens, you can use the givens to derive more givens because the more givens you have, actually the easier it becomes, right? So for this kind of problem side, if you notice, there are actually not much givens. Right, so what it means here is you need to work harder. All right, now let me grab my pencil, my digital chalk. All right, now in uh, each time you do problem sum, do take note of Dr. Zam's golden rules. Okay, Dr. Zam's golden rules are very simple read carefully. All right, don't miss out on any words, understand clearly, annotate or draw. Right, you can annotate on them, draw, visualize, and draw. So basically, when you visualize and draw, when you use your brain, right? So this is brain based learning of math. When you fully use your brain, whole brain learning, you make use of everything that you can do, like drawing, you involve different senses. Your brain is more capable when you do that, right? When you use the whole brain, your brain becomes better at it. So this is something that we always advise our students to use. So let's take a look at this. Let's read carefully and understand clearly. All right, and annotate and draw. So Mr. Simon, all right, annotate. Annotate means make marking. So for those who have not looked at the video, please look at the video so you can understand what I'm doing here, right? So Mr. Simon spent $1,280 of his salary on a fridge, all right? So he has this amount of salary, okay, this amount of his salary on what? On a fridge, all right? On a fridge. And one third of the remainder, right? So this is a clue that you're using this remainder concept. So one third of the remainder on an iPhone, all right? So remainder, one third of the remainder, not one third of his salary, but one third of the remainder on an iPhone, right? So if he had two fifth of his salary left, right? Two fifth of his salary left, how much was his salary? Okay. Now there are many ways, many, 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 many ways to solve problem sums. Now the thing about problem sums, I just want to be very clear with all of you. When you are doing problem sums, it is considered an open-ended sort of question. Open-ended means there is no one correct definitive working or set of workings for you to use. What is important is what is the best method for you because not everybody can understand methods well, right? So in this case, like I promise to you, I'm not going to use strange out of the world branches method, you know, just because it sounds like, wow, branches method. I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to use very simple methods which you already know. In this case, it's a model. I'm going to show you a model, right? By using a model, we can solve this, all right? So like I mentioned to you, what is important here in open-ended question is you need to know the best way to solve this. So that's why I have simplified it into GWS method, givens, workings, solution, and then use Dr. Zamke's checklist. Right? So if you use Dr. Zamke's checklist, the first question you ask yourself is what topic? Right? So if you look at this, it's very simple. The topic is very simple. It's about money. All right. Everybody can do money nowadays. I don't see any students struggling with the concept of money. Fraction, yeah, fraction, probably some students still struggling and fraction, right? Not that difficult. If you look at the given, there's only three givens, right? And remember what I said, the lesser, um, the, the fewer givens are uh, that are given to you, when there are fewer givens, the harder the question is, all right? So that's the first thing. Now, the next thing you ask yourself, what heuristics do you want to use? So like I mentioned to you, in this case, I want you to draw a model, right? Then the next thing you ask yourself, what else do you do, all right? So in this case, I'm going to show you how to do this, right? The first thing you ask yourself, his salary, in this case, there's only one hole that you're talking about. You're talking about his salary. His salary is the hole, right? And all these are the parts. So one third is the part, okay, which he spends uh, on the iPhone. So iPhone is one part, all right? And then the fridge is another part. And then the, the amount of salary left is another part. So total, there are three components to the salary, three parts to the salary. So when you have this kind of question, your model, you should just draw the part whole model, right? 
So the part whole model only has one model. Okay, one rectangle, just one bar. So there is another term for this. This kind of terms, we don't call it comparative model. Comparative models is when you have to have more than one model. For this kind of model, it's called the part whole model or distributive model. Distributive model here means you distribute the model into the different parts. All right? All right. Now, let's try to fill this up uh, slowly so that you can understand. So, Mr. Simon spent 1,280 of his salary on a fridge and one third of the remainder on an iPhone. So, let's say, all right, let's say this is the amount of money he spent. All right, of his salary. So, this whole thing is his salary. Okay, I'll go slow. No worries. What's important is for you to understand. So, this whole is his salary. So, 1,280 is for the fridge, right? All right, okay, this part I think everybody know. Now, this part here is known as the remainder, right? This part here, after he spent on the fridge, this part here is called the remainder. And why do you call this a remainder concept? Because it involves the remainder. Alright, let's read this part again. One third of the remainder on an iPhone. So, what happens here is this remainder now becomes a new hole. Okay, it becomes a new hole for this fraction. This fraction, one third, is not one third of the salary, but one third of the remainder. So, we know when we are referring to the remainder, right, we should cut it into three. Right, because they are talking about one third. So, one third of the remainder means you cut the remainder into three parts equally, and one of it, according to the question, okay, which is this part, is used to buy an iPhone. Right? Simple? Yes. Simple. It's used to buy an iPhone. Alright? And then the question states here that the rest, which is this one, okay, the third part of it, is actually what he has left. Right? What he has left. So if you notice, what he has left here are two units, right? Two units out of the remainder. Okay? Two units. And these two units happen to be two fifth of his salary. Right? So this two is actually two fifth of the whole thing. Right? So this part here, according to the question, is two fifth of the whole thing. Right? Two fifth of the whole thing. Okay, so if this is two fifth of the whole thing and one of these is one unit each, right? One unit each. Correct? So it means that the amount he used for his iPhone is also one unit. Right? Because this is two units and they say this two unit is two fifth of his salary. So this part of the remainder here, which is used for the iPhone, is one fifth of his salary, right? His salary. His salary here means the whole of his salary. So what you are left here is will be two fifth. Right? So two fifth of his salary is 1,280. Alright? So it depends on what you like to do. For me, most of the time it's easier to just deal with units. So I'll just put two units. Alright, remember do not use equal sign because units and money are different. So 2 units is equal to 1,280 Alright, so 1 unit is 640 Alright, in this case they are asking you how much was his salary. So that is the final answer they want you to give them. How much was his salary? Salary. His salary, if you look at the whole model here, how many units are there? Right? This one will have two units, right? So total will be five units. Right? So you need to find five units. Alright, now here's the thing. If you have a calculator, right? Alright, especially for paper two. Do not waste your time using mental sum because you might make careless mistakes. So just use your calculator. Even me, I want to use my calculator because sometimes I make careless mistakes myself, right? So I'll just use a calculator. Just, you know, type quickly, 640. So let me just double check 1280 divided by 2. 
right? 640 is correct and then I need to multiply by 5 $3,200 so his salary is $3,200 right so how much was his salary his salary was $3,200 alright let me give you some time to process it alright this is what is very important here like i mentioned to you non-routine method means they can ask you similar questions but you will never get the same question they can do a lot of other stuff to that question right so what's important here is the concept of part and whole you need to understand when you're talking about fraction the holes that you're referring to as reference changes like for example here the hole in this model is the salary right is the salary but then when you're talking about the remainder, right, in this case, you're talking about one third of the remainder, the remainder now becomes the one whole of the one third. All right, so you need to understand when you're talking about fraction, right, are you talking about a fraction of which whole, right? So one third in this case is one third of the remainder, right? One third of the remainder. So when you cut out the model, that one third must refer to that whole. The whole here in this case is the remainder. All right, and then what is left is the fridge. So by mathematical reasoning, if the two units which are left of his salary is two fifth, right? It means that the iPhone will be one unit. All right, and that means the fridge which is left two fifth, right? Because the whole amount for the whole entire salary will be five or five, right? So you have one fifth plus two fifth, so you are left with two fifth for the fridge. Right, so that means two units will be meant for that part of the model, which is 1,280. So you come out with one unit, 640. Therefore, five units is 3,200. Alright, I do not want to rush this question. I do not want to keep giving you more questions. Alright, what I want to do here is I want you to understand. Because when you understand this question, you can draw a model easily. Right, and you can uh, manipulate the model to help you solve the problem like the way I did alright so that's why I want you to be very familiarized with fractions with part and whole with units method with model method you know and use mathematical reasoning you know when you know that two units is two fifth of the salary therefore there are five units right for the whole salary and then uh, the fridge is stated down there as the last part of the model and the last part of the model should have two fifth of the salary which is two units Right, so this is the remainder concept, right? So you can expect this kind of question your PSL if, alright, it's not going to be exactly the same. It's not going to just be involving fractions. Sometimes they can even give ratio, they can give percentages. But what is important is the concept of remainder, alright? The concept of remainder. How do you break the model down? How do you break the quantities down? And how do you represent them? That is very very important, alright? So. Uh, what I'm going to do here is on Thursday, which is tomorrow, I'm going to give you a set of questions which is based on remainder concept for you to test further, right? So what's important today is for you to be able to know how to do this, okay? So make sure you take down the question on a piece of paper. When we end this uh, e-class, I want you to do this question on your own without looking at the answer, alright? So to just get your brain uh, going to practice your brain to solve such a problem all right now let's move on to the next concept so this is basically the remainder concept all right now the next concept is repeated identity concept all right <coughs> yeah i know it's always easy to just teach you a certain problem some strategies and tell you oh this is the strategy when you solve this problem this is the strategy when you solve this problem but the real problem students have is when do I use certain concepts when do I use certain problem sum strategies there are so many problem sum strategies you already have to memorize the concepts for math you have to memorize so many formulas now you have to memorize problem sum strategies right so it only makes sense for you to have the toolbox and know how to use them just like when you have a toolbox of uh, hammer screwdriver and 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 all the other tools inside you will know how to use them because you know what it is for the same thing for the math problem sums toolbox right so when do you use repeated identity concept okay so in this problem the identity or of an object or person is repeated right so it's repeated more than once so that's why it's called repeated identity all right so that means the identity of somebody is repeated more than once and it's being compared with different people 
right? So that's the starting point, right? So for this method, I would prefer you to use a model or units method. Now take note of this. I want to repeat again. Don't be pressurized to use units method. Don't be pressurized to use model method. Don't be pressurized to use both method. Don't be pressurized to use what are termed as the smart method. Okay, there's no such thing as smart method. There's no such thing as a fast method or slow method. The only method is what is the best method for you to solve the question in the shortest amount of time. Okay, so remember that. Do not be pressurized. Oh, there is like a, a special method, magical method. There's no such things. Okay, because the whole point of PSLE math is to see how you solve problems. Alright, and there are many ways to solve a problem. Most important is how will you solve the problem because there are so many ways most important way is the one that you're most confident of the one that when i give you that question again and again no matter what kind of question you will get it right again and again right so be comfortable with the method you want to use so my advice for you is to stick to what you know so if you know how to use model just use it if the models do not suit because the numbers are too huge use the units method if you feel you need to use both use both all right sometimes you can use a model and combine with the units because the model cannot you know, like for example, why you would you want to cut out a model by 100 times to represent 100 units? You can easily just cut the model and just show a part of the model which represents, let's say, 100 units, right? So please, use your brain, okay? Do not just memorize problems, some strategies. Understand how they are used, all right? So I'm now going to show you an example of identity, uh, uh, sorry, repeated identity concept, all right? So like I mentioned to you today, you know, I know some of you are very tired. You know, today is already 5 o'clock, right? So what I want to do here is, I just want to make sure for those who have never heard of these concepts to understand these concepts and figure out when you can use them and when you need to use them, how to use them, right? Because like I mentioned to you, problem sums is not about memorizing, okay? You don't memorize problem sum. You know how to solve problem. You need to have a certain system. So make sure you use Dr. Sam Keys checklist, okay? So that you have a certain system that so that you have the math brain to solve problems okay so this is an example of how you can use repeated identity concept okay let me just get my pencil my digital chalk all right again use the gws method gws method is look at the givens look at the solution that they want and find out the workings okay using the case checklist so if you have just joined us Take note, you can download the keys checklist GWS method by signing up for the newsletter, drzan.com slash newsletter, and you can get the downloads immediately. Alright? So let's read carefully. Okay, remember Dr. Zan's golden rules. Number one, read carefully. Read carefully. Alright, read and analyze. You read and visualize. Read carefully and understand clearly. You must understand everything that's stated there. Alright, so the best way is to visualize. Visualize in your head. If you are not that sort of person, you're not that sort of learner, draw. Such that you fully understand. For you to solve a problem, you must fully understand. Right, that's the first step. If you don't understand, no point. There's no point going on. Right, so you need to understand clearly. And that is the main problem of a lot of students who do not do well. They cannot understand. Okay, because some of them will say, the language too difficult. No, the language is not difficult. Because you do not know how to understand. Right, so read carefully and understand. Alright. So let's do it. Joanne, okay, Joanne has two sevenths as many stickers as Mary. All right, so let's go slow because there are only a few sentences. All right, so it's always good to spend more time to understand rather than you try to figure out how to do it, then you waste time. All right, so Joanne has two seven as many stickers as Mary. So who's the one that has more? Mary. So straight away in your head, you can imagine Mary as a whole. So Mary has a whole with seven parts right this is one whole as in w h o l e right so she has a whole with seven parts all right simple as that so if she has seven parts joanne will have two parts of these seven it's as simple as that so as you go through this your brain starts visualizing right scribble down annotate whatever it is as long as you understand the question okay it's always better to have scribbles around your questions okay rather than you don't even have any scribbles but please take note when you scribble around a question don't scribble until you cannot read the original question anymore all right so don't overdo it okay so joanne has two seven as many stickers as mary and one third right as many stickers as benjamin all right so this is the repeated identity joanne is being compared to benjamin it's repeated here right so in this case you can imagine okay in this case you can imagine benjamin has three parts Right, three times, 
uh, one third so Benjamin has three parts and Joanne will have one part alright but you must remember Joanne has the same amount so in this case Joanne will have about the same size as we had drawn here right but it's being compared to Ben so Ben Benjamin had three parts okay so understand that part first don't worry about everything else understand okay what is the whole and the part you're comparing with so when Joanne is being compared to Mary you would draw two out of seven right two compared to seven for Joanne and Mary but then when she is being repeated and you're comparing it with Benjamin now is one is two three All right so in this case is one is two three All right now let's take a look if they have a total a total of 165 stickers how many stickers does Joanne have All right okay good that's the other given so in the uh, method that I've taught you in the GWS method that I taught you <coughs> you must take note of all the G given right so in this case you have the given so let's draw right so Joanne okay and then we have Mary all right then we have Benjamin okay so in this kind of model it is called comparative model or comparison models okay <coughs> so in this case okay Joanne has one part Mary has how many parts? Joanne has one part or two parts? Two parts, right? Two over seven. So Joanne has two parts. Okay. Mary has seven parts. Okay. Don't worry too much about being accurate with your model because I know some students spend like half an hour to draw the perfect model. Most important is the model must help you to solve the question and at the same time relatively accurate, right? So in this case, if you look, Mary has seven. Right, and then Joanne, Joanne has two, two out of seven. Okay, good. So far, so good. Okay, but Joanne also, okay, in this case, this part here, Joanne also has one third. Right. So by right, according to Ben's whole, okay, this whole comparing to Ben, okay, she would have one of three. So Ben will have three of these big pieces. Okay, big pieces. Okay. So in this kind of question, you must take a look, you know, which I'm sure by now you should know, you must break the model into equal parts, right? So in this case, very easy. You just cut it, right? In this case, it's easy. You can cut it. But if in certain cases where it's not easy, then you use units, right? So in this case, you know it's two units, right? In this case, it's seven units, right? So you get the fraction correct, two over seven. In this case, it's six units. Alright, 6 units. So again, you get a fraction correct. 2 over 6 is 1 third. So the fractions all work out. Fantastic. Then the next given is 165 total. So just put 165. You see? So at this stage, if I need to go further to tell you how to do it, that means you need to revise again on your model. Right? So clearly, you just need to total up the number of units. So total up number of units is 2 plus 6 is 8 plus 7. 15 units okay is equal to 165 all right like i mentioned to you do not waste your time to do mental sum if it's paper to use calculator right i don't even want to waste my time and prove to you like i'm like a, a smart guy i rather get the correct answer than prove to you like my brain can do mental sum all right 11 so one unit is 11 all right one unit is 11 now joanne how many stickers does Joanne have? So you're looking out for this, right? This part here, two units. So two units is equals to 22. So if sometimes it's too easy, then you don't have to use calculator, but it's always good to check, 22, right? So Joanne has 22 here. So you just, if you want, you can compare, you know, 22 out of 77 is one, uh, is one, two over seven and so on. So you can check your answer again, right? So down here, you can just write Joanne, Joanne has 22 stickers and you'll get the full marks okay so normally this kind of question is about three marks I get three marks maximum all right because it's not considered difficult so it's only difficult because you do not know the method right and uh, normally this kind of question is quite easy because the numbers are quite small so it's very easy for you to break down the model into smaller parts okay so let me just repeat this one more time uh, repeated identity concept is when you repeat 
a certain object of a person twice. So in this case, Joanne was being compared to Mary, and then was being compared to Benjamin. But the amount remains the same, right? Joanne's two over seven is the same as one over three. So you use comparison model to make sure you compare correctly to the two objects that you're talking about. In this case, you're talking about Joanne and Benjamin. All right. Then after that, you work out your model, find the units, right? So for me, I love to combine model and units because it's the most straightforward method. You don't have to master model and units, right? It's something that you've learned since primary three. Primary three, you've learned how to do model. In fact, some of you have learned since primary two. So why do you want to learn something new totally out of the sudden, right? So just use whatever you learn. Just take note that when you have a question like this, where the identity is repeated, it's called repeated identity concept, right? So you compare it. Okay, good. Okay, so normally when we have e classes, I would like you to get ready some drinks, you know, drink your water or eat your sweets because in brain based learning, you cannot be learning when you're tired, right? You need to have glucose. Like, for example, if you're learning in the studio at Qantas Learning, every 20 minutes you will get one minute brain break. Okay, so let's take a brain break. If you don't mind, I'd like to have a sip of water. So for those who are joining us live, yeah, take a break. All right, it's good to take a break. Brain break, right? Don't go off playing FIFA games for one hour, right? Go take a break, brain break. All right, don't go and watch cartoons. It's a brain break. So just take a short break, one minute break, right? So let's move on to the final concept. Like I mentioned to you, don't worry. Every Thursday is test me Thursdays, right? So you can download more questions for all the different concepts that are tested so that you can reinforce your understanding. But in today's webinar, I just want to make sure that you are introduced properly to this concept so that at least when you look at a question in the future, you can know, oh, this is a concept that Dr. Zan taught me. All right. And I know how to do it. It's just a matter of practicing even more. All right. So don't worry. All right. Now, the last concept that we're going to cover today. Now it's about six o'clock. I'm quite happy. Right, because I do not want to take too long to cover some concept because I rather you have more time to practice. All right, so don't worry. Tomorrow you can download that practice paper and practice, and then we will go through it tomorrow or on Friday. All right, so when do you use equal concept? All right, equal concept when you use it. So you use the equal concept, all right, when the quantities refer to different proportions of items or objects are equated together. For example, here. 50% of males are equal to 25% of females in the class. So again, let me repeat again. The part and whole concept is very important. You're referring to what part and what whole. Because in this case, 50% of males, 50% of males, the whole for 50% of males here is all the males. All the males is one whole. 50% is the part of that one whole. Right? And then when you're talking about 25% of females, you're talking about 25% of all females. Right, this percentage is not referring to all of them. This, this. That's why I said the concept of part and whole is very important. You need to know the part is referring to which whole, and this whole is which whole. So in this example, which I have given you, fifty percent of males are equal to twenty-five percent of females in the class. I'm referring to different kind of holes, two holes. One holes refer to the males, the other holes refer to the females. Right, but when you are doing equal concept, they are comparing. So again, when you compare something, you already know inside your head. You know, ah, I'm gonna use comparative model. Right, comparative models, you need to compare them. Right? So like I mentioned again, models or units method can be used. So my advice to you, please use the model or units method because they are the easiest methods to use to understand you for goodness sake your primary six. Right? Why you want to use complicated methods? Right? Because there are so many ways to solve a problem. Most important is you must be comfortable with the method. Right? So in this kind of situation, uh, normally you have to use common multiples, right? Like just now, if you notice. Uh, the previous question when we were doing repeated identity, right? We need to multiply the number such that the models match. So you must understand common multiples or common denominator, right? So common multiples is when you try to standardize the sizes of the units. And also for me, I like to use units combined with model because the model, the model gives you a visual representation so your brain can understand the question. And units help you to make the numbers easy so you don't have to cut the model too many times so i like to use both right so for you i would advise you to use both also because i think that is the easiest way to do it 
because I've seen many students they use model and units all right okay now I believe for those who are taking PSLE this year you have already learned about percentages so not a problem all right so you need to understand percentage for those who have not learned about percentage don't worry just go to drzam.com slash percentage and you can download the whole package okay the learning package the mastery package on percentages so you can download that we have practice papers we have answer sheets so just download that and you will learn more about percentages all right so let's go all right again dr zam golden rules number one read carefully okay read carefully read every single word and understand what it means number two understand clearly clearly you must understand clearly all right how to know you understand clearly you can form the picture in your head you can form a movie in your head about this problem some of these problems have become real to you so that's why i always say annotate draw visualize okay so these are all uh, accelerated learning techniques okay sometimes we do offer such learning techniques you know you can actually join our class uh, whereby we cover learning techniques okay so given that let's read given that 20 percent of wilson's sum of money so 20 percent of this whole okay so wilson is the whole of this 20 percent of money is equal to 50 percent of isaac's sum of money right so now you have two holes the first hole refers to wilson right so this is wilson's money all right and then the next hole is the 50 percent of isaac money so you know you need to draw two models all right then in this case you are supposed to find ratio so for those who are taking foundation math you wouldn't know how to do ratio but to tell you the truth ratio is very simple ratio is just like fraction right it's just that the way you write it you must write it in a certain way so don't worry even if you're taking foundation most important is you need to know the equal concept and then you can do it no worries all right so i'll show you so in this case the solution they ask for is find the ratio of wilson's sum of money all right to isaac's sum of money all right so very simple 20 percent right so sometimes 20 percent is very hard to draw so normally convert it into a fraction so in this case 20 percent if you want you can convert it to out of 10 all right don't worry about changing it to equivalent fraction simply so no nobody's testing you on fractions if somebody's testing you on fraction yes simplify the fraction but in this case you just want to make sure the denominator is the same right so why bother to convert to 1 over 5 because here is also a percentage right so in this case you know it's 5 over 10 and this 10 you must take note this 10 is 10 of Isaac sum of money and these two are 10 is Wilson's money right so you must take note of that okay so let's draw so Wilson and Isaac so Wilson okay you can draw 10 no problem okay you want to draw 10 units you can draw 10 units right most important is you need to be able to solve the problem right so just draw 10 units okay you want to write uh further details up to you okay but just shade the part okay so in this case 20 percent and then all right so this is the equal concept 50 percent exact sum of money but you remember they say it's equal so make sure you draw the box that refers to the same amount as wilson's so which is this part right so in this case this part here they say it's 50 percent so 50 percent which is 5 out of 10 which means half Right, so that means this you have to draw the other half, right? Which is this, right? So this is the other half. So this fifty percent of Z, this is the other one. So you standardize the sizes, right? So in the end, Z has four units. Wilson has ten units. All right. So down here they say find the ratio of Wilson sum of money to Z sum of money, right? So it is 10 is to 4 right so for those who are taking foundation math you don't have to learn about ratio but for those who don't even know ratio and you're taking standard math let me just repeat ratio is just the quantity of one object or the quantity of a certain amount of something is to the other so in this case wilson has 10 unit is to 4 but remember you must convert it to the simplest form which is in this case is 5 is to 2 right so what is the ratio of Wilson sum of money to SX sum of money? 5 is to 2. That's it. That's your final answer. Right? So it's very simple. This question is very simple. Of course, I give you simple questions because I do not want to confuse you. 
on advanced problem solving methods which involve equal concept i just want you to understand you know if you can equate okay if you can equate this part of wilson's amount this part all right to this part of exact amount and then after that you can extend the model to two more units of exact because it's 50% so the other one is another 50% i'll be more than happy right so in this case this is 20% of wilson okay this 20% is being compared to wilson and then this 50% is being compared to Isaac's whole. Alright, so if you notice, the past three questions or the past three methods, your understanding of part and whole is super important. You need to be very clear when you're talking about fraction, uh, percentage or decimal, whatever it is. When you're talking about a certain part, you're talking about the part of which whole. Alright, and then when you're comparing part and part, what do you mean? So in this case, we are comparing the part of Wilson, which is 20% of Wilson's, and we compare it to Isaac's 50%, which is actually equal. They are actually the same size. So when you draw the model, it should be the same. All right. And then why did I break Isaac into four units? Because I wanted all of the units to have the same size. Right. So I can equate them into units. Right. So as you can see, the methods, the concepts are very important. I just want you to know the concepts first. Get it very clear in your head. Right, so these three concepts are normally tested in your PSLE. I can guarantee you at least one of it will come out for your PSLE this year. Confirm. Alright, so it's very important for you to know how to use them. So for tomorrow, please download the Thursday Test Me papers. Alright, you will have more practice in these three concepts. For those who have signed up for the package, you will receive all of this in your email. Alright, or in your WhatsApp group. So make sure you do it and the answers will be given to you. Alright, you can take a look at the answers. Uh, the answer key and then if you don't understand we actually have explainer videos all right so again i just want to remind you uh please get yourself updated and receive the welcome gift so like i mentioned to you the welcome gift uh let me just show you the printed version of the welcome gift all right so the first welcome gift that you will get is actually the mastery checklist psa mastery checklist right so all the uh topics that you need to know must uh, that you need to know will be found inside and then at the same time you will be able to download gws method and Dr. Zanke's checklist. So make sure you download the newsletter or rather just subscribe to the newsletter. You get the welcome gift automatically. And always be updated on drzam.com. You know, sign up for Dr. Zam math newsletter. Right now, this particular preview class is streamed live on YouTube. So just go to youtube.drzam.com or if you want to go live, drzam.com slash YouTube live. You can go to my Twitter. You can go to my Instagram. You can read the blog. So it's everywhere. Right? So right now, I just want to say uh, I hope you will revisit all these concepts, apply them, practice them. All right. So in the next class, I'm going to show you four more non-routine methods. So these four non-routine methods are what they call the transverse uh, questions. Right. There are four kinds. So we will be taking a look at the different kind of external transfer methods, uh, internal transfer methods. Right. So I'll be showing you four different non-routine methods in the next class. Right, so today, uh, I think I would want just to get you started. So if you have questions, I will take your questions because now it's just 6 o'clock. Okay, so let me just check. is in the webinar now that's good let me just check facebook since we are doing live facebook and uh, youtube okay so for those who are on the webinar all right you can start asking the question uh, and then uh, those on facebook okay so you you uh, okay it's good that you ask this question. So the question here is, when do I know which method to use, right? When do I know which method to use? Okay, good question. When do I know which method to use? Yep, good question. Okay, when do I know which method to use? It's actually quite simple. If you look at the question, sometimes there are trigger words. You know, like for example, when you do the, uh, like for example, when you do the remainder concept question. Okay, let me just show you the slide again. <coughs> okay, 
So uh, it's a very good question. Okay. So like for example, this remainder concept question. Mr. Simon spent $1,280 of his salary on a fridge. Right? He spent this amount of money on his, of his salary on a fridge and one third of the remainder on an iPhone. Right? So of course, the most obvious keyword here is remainder, but don't be fooled by it. Right? What is important is to understand the question. I know some students, they just love road learning. They just love to look at the thing. Okay, I see one word that means this. No. There's... You need to understand that means if you understand it such that it requires you to use a remainder concept then you use not just based on words all right so in this case it's a question of a part of a part right so normally that is a trigger when you realize that that question makes wants you to understand the question and makes uh, use of facts which are part of a part then you know that this is a remainder concept all right so my advice to you is do not just rely on keywords okay no, rely on your understanding of the problem. Don't just tell your children or tell yourself, oh, I see the word remainder means, okay, remainder concept. No. What's important is you need to understand. When you understand the concept this way, then you say, oh, yeah, this 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 problem, I understand it such that I need to use the remainder concept method. Okay, don't use, oh, because got, uh, there's the word remainder inside, therefore I have to use remainder concept. No. All right. what's important is how you understand the question and therefore you use the correct method. Alright, so let me just repeat one more time before we call it a day for today's class. Please use the heuristics or the method that is easiest for you to get the answer. Right, like in this case, I won't recommend you use something new like the branch method. You know, like for example, remainder concept, many tutors or many uh, centers will teach your child or teach you how to use branch method. But branch method is a little bit strange. Because your kids are not used to using branch method. You know, branch method is something that kids in O level and N level will use for probability, right? It's called the probability tree. So if your child wants to use branch method to probably impress himself, then go ahead. But uh, let me tell you this, you don't have to use branch method to solve things, okay? Units and model are good enough. Okay, so if you want to use branch method, go ahead. Okay, but it means that your child needs to learn something new totally from scratch. But if your child is already good in branch method because he learns it somewhere, go ahead and use branch method. But for me, I would say stick to units and models because your child is already sitting for the prelims and there's no time to learn branches method. Okay, if your child is already good at branches method and solving remainder concept questions, go ahead. Alright, go ahead. Most important here is whatever problem sum strategies that you are learning, they must be easily understood and they must be easily uh, be used. You know, you cannot be giving them problem sum strategies that they don't even understand what it is. They don't even know when to use it or how to use it. That was the point, right? So, these are the three concepts which I feel your kids can learn easily or you can learn easily and apply immediately. So, tomorrow, watch out for the practice paper. And then you can do more questions pertaining to these three concepts. Okay? So let me just take a look for the last question before we go offline. Alright. Uh, okay. So will this sort of question be tested in foundation math? Yes. Okay. Foundation math will still test you on problem solving. It's just that the problem solving is no longer five marks. Okay. They won't test you on, on a problem sum which requires so many workings. Okay, probably maximum three workings but does that mean problem solving methods are not tested no they still require you to solve problem it's just that certain concepts are not tested like ratio is not tested speed is not tested all right but it doesn't mean they won't ask you problem sum foundation math still has problem sums right so these methods can still be used okay can still be used for foundation math all right if you have further questions always email me contact at drzam.com you can also message us on Dr. Zam's math. Okay, I'll, there's a team out there that will respond to you. So I'll see you later uh, this Friday for the second class. The second class is also a free preview to the public and it will be streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. So you can catch me on Friday at 5 p.m. for PSLE revision. And do take note, all right, right now we have the price of PSLE revision series for only $67 with our ironclad money back guarantee. I'll give you back 100% of whatever you paid when you show me your PSLE results your child PSLE result that he did not improve I'll return back 100% and you can keep all the materials alright and then for those uh, if you have siblings who are taking N-level or O-level 
email or email. I'll see you at 8 p.m. today. Today is the first session of O level N level email series. Again, this preview class is freely available so that you know exactly how I'm going to cover it and how useful all this is going to be to you. All right. So I hope you have a good dinner. Rest well. Okay. Rest well. Keep on learning. Okay. Keep on telling yourself you are good enough for success. Okay. Everybody is good enough for success, including you. Alright, you just need to tell yourself you can do it. Make sure you revise your work. Okay, there's no more time. Revise your work every single day. Put aside five hours. Be serious. Learn and you'll be a success. Alright, so I'll see you again in the next class which is this Friday 5 p.m. All the best. So make sure you download tomorrow's uh, worksheets for you to reinforce the concepts on these three important methods, non-routine methods. Okay, all the best. Good evening. See you again. Bye.